fire control computers solve fire control problems. Their solutions depend upon own ship's course and speed, target's range, target's bearing, target's course and speed, wind speed and direction, initial shell velocity, and other factors up to a possible total of 25. I can do that. Welcome to this video where I'll be introducing the projects that I've been working on for the past few weeks, which I've called the turret aimer. There are two main modes with this thing. Currently it's on manual mode, meaning with this joystick you can move the turret here up and down, as well as right and left. Now this turret doesn't actually shoot anything. It's kind of just a display for what the control unit is calculating. So there are two motors on the inside, one for moving it left and right, and one for moving it up and down. The other mode is the far more interesting one, and this is the automatic mode. In the automatic mode, the user inputs six different values, and using those six different values, the control unit itself calculates how to aim the gun to hit an imaginary target. Now these six values are the projectile velocity, the enemy's velocity, the enemy's range, the initial enemy bearing, the enemy travel bearing, as well as the strength of gravity. And to explain exactly what these inputs mean, let me get a piece of paper. The turret aimer solves a problem called the fire control problem, which is where you need to hit a moving target with a projectile that follows the laws of gravity. Now, of course, this is assuming that the Earth is flat, there's no air resistance, uh, gravity is constant at different altitudes, and of course, no relativity, no quantum mechanics. And this is a top-down view of the situation. This is where you are at the point of firing, and this is where the enemy is at the point of firing. So if you just aim directly at the enemy, then of course, you would miss at the point of impact, because by the time the projectile has went through the air and impacted the point where the enemy was, the enemy would have moved, since this is the enemy travel direction. So this is the point where the enemy will be at the point of impact. So instead of aiming in this direction, you need to be aiming in this direction. Six variables need to be known in order for the calculation to be done. You need to know the strength of gravity. You need to know how fast the projectile is when it's being fired. You need to know the end direction of the enemy initially, which I've called initial enemy bearing. You need to know how far away the enemy is, which I've called initial enemy range. I say they're the initial ones, since by the time that the projectile impacts, these two values would have changed. The two other variables are the enemy travel direction, as well as the enemy traveling speed. With these six values, you're able to calculate the direction to aim the gun, as well as how high up to aim the gun in order to achieve this range. And then you would have solved the fire control problem, which is exactly what this turret aimer does in the automatic mode. Now that you know what this thing is doing, let me explain 
how it works in some detail. As you can see, the turret and the control unit are connected with a single USB wire. But actually, this is an abuse of the USB system. And to get into more detail on how the mechanical parts of this project work, you can click in the top right corner right now and see the video about the mechanical parts of this project. There are also videos about the software as well as the maths that control the automatic section and links to those videos can be found at the end of this one as well as in the description. The brains of the control unit is a single Raspberry Pi Pico which runs a special version of Python called MicroPython and all the components here on the top panel are connected to it using a circuit board on the inside. You've seen how the manual mode works. Let me go into a bit more detail about how the automatic mode works. To control the six inputs, there are six potentiometers here. Three are linear potentiometers, and the remaining three are rotary potentiometers. To change the value of the input, you simply move the position of the switch. You can see how moving the switch causes the actual turret to move, since changing the input changes the output that's required to hit the target. Changing the initial enemy bearing, for example, causes the turret itself to also move to compensate. And changing the strength of gravity also causes the height of the gun to change. For these three inputs over here, this one being projectile velocity, this one being enemy velocity, and this one being enemy distance, there are these two dial switches which control their order of magnitude. For example, currently, the projectile velocity is reading a value of 55 meters per second. But if I switch this switch up one step, then now it's reading a value of 5,500 meters per second. And if I switch it down a step, it's reading a value of 0 0.55 meters per second. A similar thing is done with the range to control its order of magnitude. So this allows a wide range of inputs to be put in and calculated. With the three other inputs, the order of magnitude isn't as important. These two control angles and simply rotating the potentiometer is enough to get the desired input. And this one controls the strength of gravity and there's no need for there to be such a wide variation. So this is all I have in this introduction video. As I've said, if you want to look into more detail about the technical aspects of the project. Here are the videos on the screen now about the more detailed technical aspects. Hope you've enjoyed.